with you just a few slides that uh, come from a WFNS effort to try to bring together and share best practices in what different continents are doing in global neurosurgery. So at the WFNS meeting in Belgrade last year, each of the second vice presidents were asked to report on what was happening in their continent with global neurosurgery. So I had the opportunity to do just a partial presentation on educational and service collaborations in global neurosurgery. And I'd like to just share with you some of these. This is not exhaustive by any means, and I apologize in advance. I'm certain that I've, uh, I will, for the interest of time, have left out individuals and entire organizations that are doing great work. But this is just to give you a flavor of some of the things that are happening uh, that have at least one arm of their organization on the North American continent, but there are many more based on every other continent. So once again, this is just um, those organizations that have one side of the bridge, if you will, uh, in North America. So there are a number of academic centers, as I've mentioned, I, I won't go through all of them, and this is changing every day, but a number of organizations, neurosurgical departments, have partnerships between their residency program and one in another part of the world. Uh, at Duke, for example, you see Mike Hagland, who has uh, really been a force uh, for positive change at the Duke Global Health Institute and a major commitment of that university. And their rising chief resident, Jackie Corley, uh, has been a, a force for, for very positive change and uh, is really the face of the future of this effort. At the University of Alabama, we've mentioned Jim Johnston. You can see him there in the photo at left in Vietnam. Also, Brandon Roque uh, also goes to Vietnam, uh, as does the uh, entire group in the pediatrics department in Vietnam. They were wise enough to recognize that we neurosurgeons don't operate in a vacuum, and so their exchange program uh, with Hanoi involves OR and ICU nurse training with our, uh, our colleagues because you certainly can't do good neurosurgery or good neurosurgical education without involving all those other people who are essential workers in our operating rooms and in our pre and post-op areas our, and our intensive cares. Um, also, I have already mentioned that they're one of the major sites the foundation and ongoing support of the intersurgeon. At Vanderbilt, you have recent grad Mike Dewan, who just joined the faculty there, who's uh, a leader in uh, red cap studies and meta-analyses and has contributed so much in terms of global data analysis and publications. And we just look for a great uh, continued work to come from him and the team that he will be leading there. In general surgery, we have been inspired by um, Sherry Wren and Casey, uh, Kathleen Casey, who at the American College of Surgeons developed a course in humanitarian surgery to help general surgeons reclaim the broad set of general surgical skills that they would need if they wanted to volunteer in or teach in the developing world. So we took and then developed, uh, took their course, which is offered at Stanford every year in humanitarian surgery and inspired by them, developed a similar course for neurosurgery. So with the enthusiastic support of our leadership, a course was launched last year uh, under the theme of the science of practice. And so we had 57 people who signed up for a course to take their specialty training, subspecialty training, I guess I should say, in neurosurgery, and uh, retrain in uh, some of the more common things that might be needed if one were teaching or assisting in the developing world. So we had spine surgeons getting refreshers in pediatric shunts, and pediatric and neurosurgeons getting refreshers in adult uh, tumor surgery and so forth. So 
that uh, was planned for this year's AANS meeting, which uh, unfortunately uh, had to be canceled, but we'll uh, surely be offering it again. Likewise, our European colleagues who have supported this endeavor are very interested in that course in humanitarian or global neurosurgery that was planned for the AANS meeting was also planned for Geneva for last week at the uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, surgical simulation labs of Professor Carl Schaller, who is the chairman of neurosurgery at the uh, Hôpital Universitaire de Genève. So hopefully that course is just on ice until next year, and I hope many of you will attend and participate. There are a number of organizations, departments that have done extraordinary work, none more extraordinary than the University of Miami, where the partnership that they have had for over 20 years under Barth Green has been um, phenomenal. Uh, Barth Green recognized the, uh, the close proximity of Haiti and the responsibility to do uh, something to be of help to them long before the tragic earthquake that they had. So he's been going there many times per year for two decades. Uh, John Rockrub, a pediatric neurosurgeon, has been there many times. Uh, Ernest Bartholome, who, who uh, hails from there as part of his heritage, is uh, a neurosurgery resident, uh, having been a fellow at Harvard PG. SSC and now at Mount Sinai uh, will be uh, surely continuing his efforts and part of the future of uh, Haitian neurosurgery already uh, very bright.